So I'm doing a little voiceover on this one because I made a mistake. I deleted the video accidentally on uh, how I turned the piece I was going to show you in this video. So I uh, hope you get something out of this little clip and we'll see what I can do later. So a while ago I made a couple lathe centers and I was going to show you how to use them. These are the turned ends here. That's a tailstock end and a lot. Um, this is the headstock end. And what I did is I turned a silly little pattern that I will probably end up burning anyway because it's too short. But that's the distance I had between centers. So I'm going to make a change to this end. And we'll go from there. So to get to this point, first thing you do when you're turning a split pattern between centers, I notice a lot of people will glue their stock up and then put a piece of paper between the cope and drag halves of the pattern. And then try and split it apart. And to me, that's a, it makes a big mess. I don't like it. Never did, that's not the way you'd do things. Anyway, so what you do is you glue your stock up as shown in the blue uh, blue area there. You'd hold it together, you will not drill your holes at this time, you'll make sure the blue ends are all sanded and shaped and exactly the same length. Then what you do, and after you glue it up, I pinch dog things together to hold it while I sand the ends so they don't move because I don't have pins in there yet. So after you get it glued together, you take the, the pinch dogs out and if you don't know what they are, these are pinch dogs. You'll have various sizes depending on the size job you're working on. So they're Hold the work together very well, and when you're done with them, you just take them out, put them away someplace. Don't need clamps on it at this time. You clamp your stock together, of course, when you glue it up, but for this part, you don't need clamps. A couple pinch dogs work great. So, after you get them apart, take the pinch dogs out. You'll put your stock between the centers, so in the tail stock, if you notice. This one is offset out that way on this side. The headstock would be just the opposite that. This side would be pushed out a little bit. They'll both be exactly the same length. And you'll put the, the screws in here to hold the stock in place on both sides. Got the screws in there. After you do that, um, then you'll drill your pinholes because now everything's screwed together good. Uh, if you want to make sure this stays down, if you got especially a long piece, you can put your pinch dogs back in new location because all that stock's going to be turned off anyway. Then you drill your pinholes. If your stock is long enough, you will add a screw hole or I've also just gone by and put a little spot of glue in between. It can be broken out real easy that way. It's just a little tiny spot, maybe the size of a dime. And what you end up with is something like this. So that's one side here with the pins in it. So I got my two pin holes and my screw hole to hold the center together. And the pins will stay in there. You do not need to fill these holes with wood or anything like that it just creates a more of a mess when you turn it if you try and put bondo in there or something like that it's going to uh, create a, a harder area here and it makes it tougher to turn so you don't want to do that just leave the holes open and uh, it's going to work out fine and after you get it turned um in your process of getting the pattern ready to be built, you can decide if you're going to put it on a match plate or mold it as a loose pattern. 
So there's a difference in the way you look at the part. If you're going to put it on a match plate, this side here with the pin holes going all the way through will be your drag side. And I'll explain later, the other side would be the coat. If you're going to do it as a loose pattern, this would be the cope side with the holes going all the way through and the drag would be down here. And I'll explain that in a minute too. The biggest reason is when you take this apart and you look at it, if you're going to put it on a match plate, you want these all the way through because this would be the drag pattern. You mount this side to a match plate, drill your holes through the board or the match plate and put your pins in the match plate and glue it together. I can show you an example of that. And this is for a Woodson steam engine patterns for it. Cylinder and this is slide valve. Um, you notice the pinholes on this one went all the way through. There are no pinholes. This is a cope side. Got the riser patterns. And this is where the sprue goes. This is a drag side. Got my pinholes here. I can get these glued or fastened to the board whichever way I want. I can do the same thing here. Um, I didn't drill holes through this. I'll show you why in a second. Um, <clears throat> anyway, after I get these mounted to the board, I drill through the, the match plate. And I can attach the cope patterns. And the reason I don't need that is where did I put it? I think I showed these before in another video. These are called fingers. And I can come in this way and verify that this basin for the riser is lined up properly. And same thing with the with the basin for the or the well basin for the uh, gate. I can line that up there, put a mark on this side as to where it's at, and line that up so that's easy. And if I end up with a shift in the pattern and I don't know where it came from, I can use this these fingers to verify that the pattern is located on the board properly. So then I would know that it's a flask that has a problem. I shifted in the flask somehow. So that's how I did that. And now when you get to a loose pattern, I've got an example of that here too. This is a standard for the Woodson steam engine. Um, got my holes drilled here. But if this is going to be a loose pattern, pins are there. The reason I do that, this one's a cope, that one's a drag, is I can glue the pins in here, put a little piece of something in there and glue it and shave it off, make it nice and pretty. And if I have to at a later time because these pins got damaged in storage or something, I can push the pins out by smacking it with a hammer and the pins will come out easy enough without destroying the pattern and you don't have to drill new holes. So that's the difference between the cope and the drag in uh, loose and mounted patterns. And turning between centers this way is nice because when you turn between centers and you don't put a piece of paper in there, your parting line comes clean and you don't have an issue with anything in there. Um, it comes apart real easy. Take the screws out of the centers and one screw out of the center there or out of the pattern and you're good to go no cleanup so that's a quick simple way to do stuff with uh, turning between centers uh, I told you I was going to make a change I think on this one uh, right now I put it in a three jaw chuck clamp it around here and I made this solid enough that it'll do that, but that's why this is so short. I didn't have enough room. My lathe isn't big enough. It's only a little 10 by 15 lathe. 
So it takes up a lot of room when you put a three jaw chuck out here, add this piece to it, and so on down the line. So what I'm going to do is and redesign this. Uh, I got a one by eight threads on the um, lathe. I'm going to put one by eight threads here. So that's about it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll talk at you later. Bye.